Okay, in this section we're going to be uh, looking at polynomial graphs, but particular subset of polynomial graphs, those that fall into this particular form, so a times x minus h to the power of n plus k. In the case of a quadratic, we would call that turning point form. In fact, in the case of any even degree polynomial, degree 2, 4, 6, 8, etc., we could call that turning point form. Um, however, the if the degree is odd, so degree 3, 5, 7, etc., the graph doesn't have a turning point, it has a point of inflection. So maybe we should call it stationary point form rather than turning point form more generally. Um, so here we're looking at the basic graph shapes of it x, x squared, x cubed, x to the power of 4, x to the power of 5, x to the power of 6, etc. And then applying transformations to those um, according to the function when we're given in this form. So as I said, when n is an odd number, so we have an odd degree polynomial, the basic function x cubed, x to the power of 5, x to the power of 7, x to the power of 9, x to the power of 27, x to the power of 81, x to the power of 193, um, will all essentially take this shape. We ju they just get more and more extreme. So the red graph there that you're seeing is y equals x cubed. If we then go to the next odd degree polynomial, which is x to the power of 5, we find that, sorry, if we're looking between here and here, so if we're looking at numbers between uh, 0 and 1, the um, when you raise, so let's think about x equals a half. Okay. So if you do 1 half cubed, you get 1 eighth. But if you then look at the next degree polynomial and it's 1 half to the power of 5, okay, that's 1 on 32, which is a lot smaller than this. So the degree 5 polynomial is going to be lower down, closer to the x-axis between 0 and 1. Degree 7 will be even further close, even closer to the x-axis. Degree 11 will be closer to the x-axis. Degree 193 will be really close to the x-axis. So it's going to get more and more extreme in that sense. Whereas when we get past x equals 1, okay, if you've got, you know, a whole number, you know, 2 cubed versus 2 to the power of 5, sorry, 2 to the power of 5, 2 cubed is 8, 2 to the power of 5 is 32. So the degree 5 polynomial gets is much bigger. So the higher degree will sit above. Um, and similar can be seen in, with the negatives, okay? So um, obviously you're talking about, you know, negative y values and negative x values, but it's the same idea. So we get that basic shape, okay? They all go through 1, 1 and negative 1, negative 1. Um, as the degree gets bigger, it's closer, the graph is closer to the x-axis between negative 1 and 1, and then further away from the x-axis between, um, from past 1 and past negative 1. Okay. So properties summarized here, f of 0 equals 0, so that means it goes through the origin. f of 1 equals 1, it will go through the point 1, 1. f of negative 1 equals negative 1, it will go through the point negative 1, negative 1. Sorry, I think I said that point incorrectly before. Um, f of negative x is equal to negative f of x. This is an example of an odd function. We're just going to hold our horses on that because we used to teach this topic after we'd done... Um, chapter 1, Functions and Relations, where we introduce the idea of odd and even functions. So we'll come back to that idea when we introduce that um, in the next topic. Um, as x approaches infinity, so that means as x gets bigger, as we head out this way, the value of the function f of x also gets bigger. Okay, So as x gets bigger, the y values, the value of the function also gets bigger. As x approaches negative infinity, so as we head out this way, f of x approaches negative infinity. Okay, so we go down as we head out to the left. Um, for the even functions, um, similar similar kind of shape. They all have a turning point at the origin, a minimum turning point at the origin. So the red graph is x squared. As we then increase the degree of the polynomial, so x to the 4, x to the power of 6, etc. Same logic as before. Between 0 and 1, we're going to be raising a fractional value to a bigger power, which means it becomes smaller. So as the power increases between 0 and 1, in fact, between negative 1 and 1, uh, the graph will sit closer to the x-axis. They'll intersect at 1, 1 and negative 1, 1, and then outside of those values, so bigger than x equals x bigger than 1 and x less than negative 1, the higher the degree, um, the, higher, the higher up the graph will be. Similar list of properties, f of 0 equals 0, the graph goes through the origin, f of 1 equals 1, the graph goes through the point 1, 1, f of negative 1 equals 1, the graph goes through negative 1, 1. 
In this case, f of negative x is equal to f of x. We'll talk more about that further down the track. That makes this an even function. We also know as x approaches infinity, so as x gets bigger, the value of the function gets bigger, approaches positive infinity. Similarly, though, as x approaches negative infinity, the value of the function approaches positive infinity, whereas here it was negative infinity. All right, so just some general properties of the two um, functions. So then once we've got our basic shapes, we then can sketch the graph of f of x equals a times x. I'm just going to, because I've changed that, I'm just going to change that to a minus there, so it matches the heading. Um, f of x minus h to the n plus k, and it also matches what I'm talking about here. So um, we should be very familiar with this format by now. We should have sketched lots and lots of quadratics and parabolas. We know that the a out the front affects the graph by dilating it from the x-axis by a factor of a. I've written this, this a, this is the modulus of a. It basically means you ignore whether it's positive or negative. So if it's negative to x minus 3 cubed plus 5, the dilation is by a factor of 2. We ignore the negative. Okay, the graph can't be dilated or stretched by a negative factor. You can neg never have a negative dilation factor. So it's dilated by a factor of 2 from the x-axis, which is the modulus of negative 2 or the absolute value of negative 2. If a is negative, which in this case it is, it would be reflected in the x-axis. And then it's translated to the left by h units and up by k units, assuming that h and k are positive. So if you're subtracting in here, um, that is, sorry, I'm going to fix that. My apologies. That doesn't match. Can we make that the right? Translation to the right by h units and up by um, k units, assuming h and k are positive. So if it has x minus 3, that is to the right by 3, x plus 5 is up by 5. If my equation was y equals you know, x plus 7 to the power of 5 minus 2, this would have gone left by 7. 7, sorry and down by 2. So the translations are what are going to tell you where that stationary point goes, whether it's a point of inflection for an odd degree polynomial or a turning point for an even degree polynomial. That will that will give you the coordinates of the stationary point. So in this case, it would be left 7, so negative 7, down 2, so negative 2. In this case, right 3, so positive 3 and up 5 would be the, in this case, point of inflection because it's an odd degree polynomial. This one's another odd one, so also um, point of inflection at negative 7, negative 2. Alright, let's sketch some graphs. So sketch y equals 3 times x minus 2 to the power of 5 plus 1. Okay, so it is an odd degree, degree 5, so the shape is going to be one of those. We've got a dilation by a factor of 3 from the x-axis. The dilation really changes very little about how you sketch the graph. It'll just change where the intercepts are when you calculate them. Um, and then we have gone to the right by 2 and up by 1, which means that the point of inflection is at 2, 1. Um, we're going to need to calculate intercepts, so x and y intercepts. The y intercept, always easier to calculate, let x equal 0, so 3 times 0 minus 2, so it's negative 2 to the power of 5 plus 1. So that's 3 times 2 to the power of 5 is 32, negative 2 to the power of 5 is negative 32. So that's going to be negative 96 plus 1, so negative 95 x-intercepts, or intercept, sorry, this odd degree polynomial shape, sorry, will have only one x-intercept wherever it is, okay, whereas the even degree polynomial could have one x-intercept if the turning point's on the x-axis, it could have two, or it could have none. Okay, so x-intercept, we let y equal zero, Remembering that when our functions are in this nice stationary point form, we shouldn't be doing any expanding, factorising, completing the square quadratic formula. We can simply solve just by rearranging. So I'm going to take away 1, divide by 3, take the fifth root, which is going to be a bit ugly to write, so the fifth root of negative one third. 
and then add 2. So x is going to be 2. Now, rather than have the fifth root of negative a third, if you're taking an odd root of a negative, it's going to be negative. So I'm just going to write that as minus the fifth root of one third. You can you could write this in lots of different ways. It's that's the same as two minus one on the fifth root of three because the fifth root of one is one. You could write it as a power instead, two minus one on three to the power of a fifth, which we could instead write as two minus three to the power of negative a fifth. Any of those perfectly fine. Okay, so let's sketch our graph. Point of inflection at two one, no reflection, so it's that shape. We've calculated our x-intercept and our y-intercept. We've got a big negative y-intercept. Obviously, we're not going to be able to draw it perfectly to scale, but you certainly want to give that sense that it's a big, um, it's a long way down. So our point of inflection I'm going to put up here. My y-intercept I'm going to aim to hit somewhere down here. Um, therefore, my x-intercept is going to be reasonably close to that point of inflection. Make sure when you're sketching a graph with a stationary point of inflection, which is what this has here, that your graph does momentarily become flat. So I like to draw myself a little flat line there just to help me with the shape. Okay, and then we want to head down here as far as we can. Make that 0, negative 95. And then try and get a vaguely sort of symmetric shape. Alright, so that's the point 2, 1. And that is the point, I'm going to use the power 2 minus 3 to the negative 1 fifth, uh, 0. You can absolutely write that up there, it doesn't matter what version you use. Okay, example 2. The graph of y equals a times x plus h to the power of 6 plus k has a turning point at 3, 2 and passes through 0, negative 79. Find a, h and k. Okay, even degrees, so turning point, okay, so the turning point at 3, 2 means that the equation is going to be a x minus 3 to the power of 6 plus 2, okay. So that tells us that h is negative 3, given the format we've got here, and k is positive 2. Okay, then we need to find a, and that's what the point is for. So we're going to sub in the point 0, negative 79. So when x equals 0, y equals negative 79. And take away 2, it's negative 81. Equals a times, now 3 to the power of 6, I don't know off the top of my head, but 3 to the power of 6, let me think about it this way, is 3 to the power of, well, it's, it's first of all, it's even. Uh, sorry, it's an even power, so it'll, negative 3 to the power of 6 is just 3 to the power of 6. Perhaps what I'm going to think about is that that negative 81 is negative 3 to the power of, I'm trying to think of the best way to say this, that's negative 3 to the power of 4. So it's actually maybe easier not to work out 3 to the power of 6, but to think of everything in terms of powers of 3 and use some index laws. So again, it's about that number flexibility. So a is going to be negative 3 to the power of 4 over 3 to the power of 6, subtracting powers because we're dividing, so that's negative 3 to the power of negative 2, or that's the same as negative 1 on 3 squared, which is negative 1 ninth. Okay, wherever you go about doing it. But again, trying to think through, I shouldn't need to work out what 3 to the power of 6 is. Um, I should be able to think about the fact that 81 is also a power of 3. Can I just use my index laws here instead? Okay, so we've got our three values. A is negative 1 ninth, H is negative 3, and K is 2. Okay, so the work here is actually from exercise um, 3G. So these, it's um, in the transformations chapter for some reason. Well, we're thinking about transformations, um, but I think it's important to think about these kind of polynomial graphs in the context of the polynomial topic. We'll look at some more graphs uh, in the next video.